What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2008 BMW X3. Today on the X3 behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your front brakes. This is going to be applicable to all the X3s in the E83 chassis range. In front of us, we have one of the kits available on FCPO.com, which consists of Zimmerman rotors with Akibono brake pads and a BOA wear sensor. To that kit, we went ahead and added some anti-rattle clips and some new set screws. And with the lifetime replacement guarantee backing this up, it makes it a little bit easier. Some things you want to know on the rotor or disc is what the wear is visually. You can run your finger across the front of it and feel if there's a lip on the inside or outside of the rotor. Now, when you're braking, under hard braking, you may feel some pulsation in the steering wheel. That usually leads to warped rotors, but keep in mind that that can often also be worn out suspension components. And same thing goes for brake pads. There's tools out there that you can measure how much meat is left on them. And also nice from BMWs and most European cars is you'll get a warning light on the dash once the brake pad wear sensor is triggered. So with that being said, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna need for this job. And now for tools. For this job, we have a big hammer, a half-inch drive torque wrench, a three-inch drive torque wrench, a half-inch drive ratchet, as well as a three-inch drive ratchet. We have a six and a seven millimeter hex pick socket. We have our 17 millimeter socket for our lug bolts, two different size 16s. We have some caliper hooks, a caliper piston compressing tool, flathead screwdriver, and then some nice to haves are wire wheels or wire brushes. So we have some electric impact tools, some liquid moly ceramic paste, and some brake clean, of course. Now with that covered, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. Before we get started on this brake job, my good people, you always want to check and keep an eye on the brake fluid level in your reservoir. Now, this car hasn't been tampered with. You can see this fluid looks quite original, and we will be changing it in another DIY, but we want to keep an eye on our level. As we compress the pistons, this level is going to rise back up. We don't want to go ahead, what we don't want to do is overpressurize this and cause a leak. So if you feel like you have too much fluid in the reservoir before you start the brake job, the safest thing to do is evacuate some of it. You don't want to empty this out completely where you're going to introduce air to the system. You simply want to lower the level where there's enough travel for the liquid to go should you be compressing the pistons back in a lot. In this case, this has never been opened, so we are more than okay to just start the brake job, but we'll keep the hood open. We'll keep an eye on it just in case it rises up too high. But with that being said, let's get the car up in the air and we'll start working on these front brakes. To get started, we have five 17 millimeter lug bolts that we're gonna wanna remove. So using the 17 millimeter lug socket, we're using an impact today. However, a breaker bar will work just fine. Now with our wheel off, we have a better view of our rotor and our brake caliper. As you can see, these are very crusty. That rotor set screw is not gonna be fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it with some penetrating fluid, let that soak for a minute. While that's soaking, I'm gonna take the opportunity to clean up the caliper a bit so that once we have all our new fresh hardware on, I'm not hitting anything with brake cleaner. So we're gonna soak that for one moment and then we'll pick it back up at some removal of some old crusty parts. All right, to get started, my first goal is gonna to be to break free that set screw while everything's still assembled. I'm gonna take my six millimeter hex, feed it into place. I'm gonna give it a couple strikes with a hammer to break free hopefully any corrosion that may be holding it in. Then we'll take our 3 8 drive ratchet and try to break it free. Now that we have our set screw off, we're gonna move over to the rotor and remove this anti-rattle clip. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver to work it off. By prying in the middle of it, you can release it from these two points in the caliper and then bring them towards you. We're gonna be replacing these with some freshies, so we're gonna set these to the side. Now let's head on back to the back side of the caliper 
where we'll take off some dust caps and work on getting our guide pins out. We got a seven millimeter hex. We'll take our dust boot covers off. Break the top one free. Break the bottom one free. Make sure you have your caliper hook or bungee cord or clothes hanger, whatever you have ready so you can hang this caliper off to the side. Right now what I'm doing is I'm just prying back the guide pin from inside the caliper just to kind of help it out a little bit. These brakes are very crusty so they need all the help they can get. Here's our lower guide pin out. There's our top one out. Now we can go ahead and work our caliper off the carrier. You may need to use a screwdriver or a small pry bar to kind of help get it started, especially if they're really stuck on here. All right, man, these pads are toast. So pop the front pad off. And then we're gonna use the old pad on the inboard side as a tool. We're gonna set up our piston compressing tool with it. And we'll use this as a backing plate to push the piston back in. So let's do that now. Try to center it as best as possible. You wanna disperse the pressure evenly. Then we can slowly compress. All right, our tool has bottomed out. You don't need to force it. Once it stops, usually the piston's in all the way. You can see our boot has compressed. We can go ahead and remove this. And we can pull this old crusty pad out. If you need to, you can always clean this up a little bit. Just careful with the dust seal. You don't want to damage the seal. But for now, we're going to go ahead and hang it off to the side. You don't want to rest this weight of the caliper on your brake hose. You can risk damaging it. So we'll hang it off the strut there. Now we're going to work on getting the two 16 millimeter bolts off that hold on our caliper carrier. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm using a half inch drive 16 with a half inch breaker bar or a ratchet, just cause these are usually kind of tight on there. There's one. There's two. Before you reinstall this bracket, you wanna make sure you clean the channels that the pads ride in. You can use a small wire brush, some brake clean, a wire wheel on a drill. I'm just gonna take the wire brush now and zap them clean really quick with a little bit of brake clean. We'll set this to the side, let it evaporate. Now we can work on getting our rotor off. Now we already took the set screw off, so if you haven't done so, you might wanna do that now. Yeah, there's no chance this is coming off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread back in one lug bolt. The reason for this is I'm gonna hammer the rotor off from the behind. I don't want it to fall on me or somebody else or the floor and damage something or hurt somebody. So that'll keep it hanging on when we whack it off. Now we can go ahead and remove this lug bolt and set this crusty rotor to the side. 
Now with our old crusty hardware off, we can go ahead and clean up this hub a bit. I'm just gonna use a small wire brush. You can use a wire wheel, again, some emery cloth, whatever you have lying around that'll scuff up the surface gently, but nicely. We're mainly gonna focus on the areas that the rotor sits on so that it doesn't get seized to our hub again in the future. So next time someone does this job or I do this job, it's nice and easy to get to. Now we're gonna hit everything with a little bit of Liqui Moly ceramic paste. This will keep our rotor from rusting to our hub and we'll just keep everything nice and fresh for the long run. A little bit where that set screw is gonna sit. We don't want it to seize on us in the long run. Those are the worst to drill out. Now with our gloves not too grimy, we're gonna go ahead and get our new rotor on and we'll get it situated with a fresh set screw. Be mindful that these zinc covered rotors, you don't really wanna hit them with brake clean. You're gonna deteriorate the coating where the pads don't make contact with the face of the rotor. So try to avoid doing that if you can. Change your gloves, clean them up a bit. You know the drill, my good people. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall or install our new rotor. Try to handle it again by the sides if possible. Get that situated there nicely. We'll get our set screw and our six millimeter hex bit. I also like to apply a little bit more of that liquid molly paste behind where the set screw sits on the rotor itself. And we'll go ahead and snug it up by hand. We're just gonna snug these up, but if you wanted to, you can torque these down the spec, which would be 16 Newton meters. And then we're gonna encapsulate them just to keep that good old rust out. New England rust, baby. Now we can take our caliper carrier bracket, our two 60 millimeter bolts, and get that situated back into place. I'm gonna zap these in with the electric ratchet just to snug them up. 16 millimeter socket. Then we're gonna go ahead and torque them down to 110 Newton meters. There's one. There's two. Now we can get our new pads ready for install. On the caliper side of things, you wanna make sure that obviously your boot and everything looks good. If you need to clean anything out, now would be the time to clean it. This backing part of the outboard portion of the, pad of the caliper is gonna to need to be greased up, so wipe off any old grease that may be on there. Now we can take our new pads and get those fed in. I oftentimes like to use a little bit of that same ceramic paste on these inside clips so that they don't seize into the inside of the piston. So I'll apply a little bit of that now. We'll go ahead and pop this bad boy in. And we'll take a little bit of the paste and coat the ears of the pad where they ride along the carrier. Then we can take our outboard pad, do the same thing to the ears and mount it onto our caliper bracket. I'm gonna go ahead and hang this up for one moment while I do that. That side's ready to go. Now we can set 
our outboard pad on. apply a little bit of paste to the outboard side of the caliper here. Now we can go ahead and slide our caliper back on. And then at this point, you can also go ahead and install your anti-rattle clip if you want it to hold everything. Just push on from the center. And now we can go ahead and take a moment, grab our guide pins and get situated to install those. I took these to a quick wire wheel just to clean them up a little bit, get some of the old rubber off of them. Now at this point, this is where I say, do as you wish, not as I do. Anyways, BMW doesn't require you to, to grease up these guide pins. I've been greasing these up for the last 14 years and will continue to do so. So it's totally up to you if you want to grease them before you install them or not. But if you do, just make sure you use something that's not gonna deteriorate the rubber. We're using some liquid molly ceramic brake paste, so we'll be more than safe. We'll go ahead and get these in. And then we'll grab our seven millimeter hex and get them started. Once we have these snugged down, we're gonna to torque them up to 30 Newton meters, and we can put our dust boot caps back on, I should say. All right, 30 Newton meters, seven millimeter hex. Boom, baby. And there we go, my good people. We're basically done with this DIY. We're gonna blast through the other side, but once we get to the brake pad wear sensor, we'll show you how to replace that. Otherwise now, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and get our wheel back on. Then we'll grab one of our 17 millimeter lug bolts and get those started by hand. Now we can snug them up with the impact. Now with our wheel situated, we're gonna hop over to the driver's side really quick and we'll show you how to take care of the brake pad wire sensor. Then we'll pick it back up by lowering this baby down on the ground and torquing these five 17 millimeter lug bolts down. All right, my good people, like I mentioned, on the driver's side, we're gonna show you how that brake pad wire sensor gets replaced. Now you can see it leading out of our caliper right here. You're gonna to wanna to pop the bleeder screw cover or grommet on the bleeder screw on the rotor, I'm sorry, on the caliper. Then from there, you're gonna to wanna to follow it up behind the strut. You simply pull it towards the wheel well to free it from the strut. Follow it all the way up, pop it free of the tab in the actual wheel well. Then we're gonna open up this electrical junction or a little electrical box, I like to call them. Lift up on the tabs. Swing it open. Then you can pull the sensor out. And there's a small tab on the end there that you depress to release the whole thing. Pop it out from the bleeder, just a grommet that holds it in place. And at this point, you can pull this out with the old pads. You can rip it out does not matter. However, once you have everything mounted on the, on the caliper with all your new stuff, it's just a matter of clipping in your sensor and then routing it the same way we took it off. So with that covered, let's head back to the other side and we'll cover torquing down our wheels. Now we can finally torque down our wheels. We're going to torque these down to 100 foot pounds or 135 Newton meters. And there you have it, my good people, another DIY in the books. Overall, a really straightforward job on the X3, but definitely a good one to know. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. 
you have any questions or comments on what we did today, or there's specific jobs you want to see been done on the E83, leave that in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.